fake hands. Bit of a no-brainer this one. If you're going for an effect in your film where you need to cut off an arm, knife through a hand, cut off fingers, um, crush a hand, anything like that, you're obviously going to need a fake hand for that. Now, you could obviously make your own and for that you're going to need alginate in order to make a good mould of the hand and then you're going to need something to cast it with whether that's uh, silicone or foam latex or just latex um, and you'll get hand and then you'll be able to paint it and use it for whatever your effect is or you could buy a ready-made one now, I got this off of eBay for $3.99 from China, delivered, and in fact they sent me the wrong one. They sent me a right hand instead of the left hand that I ordered, and so I got a refund on this. So effectively, this was free for me, but £4, and it's flexible, not well painted, not the best sculpt on the end, but this has obviously been moulded from a real hand. It's got the vein details in here, there's all the individual creases that you would expect, there's the lines across the palms, there's the fingernail details. This has not been sculpted, this is somebody's actual hand that has been cast and this has been made from it. Now, for $4.99, this is pretty good. To make a cast of my own hand, I'm going to need at least one pack of alginate, which is £7. So already this is £3 cheaper and I haven't had to do anything. Main problem with this is this bit obviously depends what effect you're going for, but this part here um, where the bone, which is really is rubbish, it's rubbish. It's badly painted at the end and this is far too flexible. You would want your bone to be harder than that. And the paint job on here is not great. The paint job overall is not great at all. It's just been raw cast and then they've done a quick wash of blood over the top of it and wiped off some bits and that's it. It's not great. If I compare this with my hand, the whole thing is far too red. Now, and this, these drips here, that's horrible. That paint just looks really, really bad. So if I'm going to use this, I'm going to have to strip the paint off of it or paint over the top of it to reuse it. The other thing is this has been stuffed with um, cotton um, batting, cotton stuffing that you'd use for soft toys. Um, and now, while it works quite well, it's been overstuffed. If we look at that palm compared to my palm, I can't do this. If I do it that way, it's been completely overstuffed. And this, it just fills out and it, it just looks wrong. So I'm gonna have to remove some of the stuffing from that in order to get it to look better. It's also not the best cast. There are these red parts here that you can see. And there's a couple more um, on the ends of the fingers here. And there's one here. These are actually holes. And there's a couple of spots here. These are actually holes in the latex, which the cotton has then come out of a little bit and the cotton has dyed with the red blood paint. And so that's why we get those bits. So those are gonna to have to be removed and possibly filled and we're gonna to have to repaint this. But I reckon because it's a, it's a real hand that's been molded, it's not a sculpt, then this is gonna turn out all right and be really good for our effect. Now there are some fake hands that you can get on eBay, which are frankly terrible. This is not one of them though. So make sure you have a good look at the pictures and you should be able to tell which ones have actually been cast from real hands and which are sculpts. And the sculpts are not worth the money. 
in the slightest. This I'm going to try and do something with. I'm going to use some white spirit because frankly when it comes to paint white spirits will pretty much take anything off at all. And my main thing that I want to do is get rid of this red coloration so I can repaint it. But the main thing, I want to tackle these blood drips because they look terrible. All I'm going to do is see how much of this I need before this starts shifting. That's coming off a little bit, but I think it's time to get even more heavy duty. Razor blade at the ready. Well, I feel for now that this is about as good as we're going to get. The rest of that blood is not coming off easily. Neither is the rest of the red, but I think with a bit more paint over the top of it, we should be able to tone that red down and get it to look more normal, not like it's been bloodied and cut up. Just normal human hand, which we can use as a stand-in. For now, I'm going to take some of this acrylic from Citadel. This was particular one is Elf Flesh, which unfortunately is out of production, but I'm going to use it and I'm going to dab on a little bit over the top of this red streak. And I'm just going to work that in with my finger because I don't want it to be too thick. I want to work that in and my finger works quite well as a sponge. It's moving it side to side. Let's see how this is going to go on. See that's obviously too thick and uh, if I just pat it out with my finger we're starting to cover this. not having it too thick in one spot. So you can see here that I've put the paler wash over the whole thing with the elf flesh. So that's just taking that whole colour down from the pink and it's looking much closer. It's going to need some white wash on there as well though I think to take the colour down a bit more. But it's too uniform in colour now. For real skin, I want this to be much more mottled. So what I'm going to do is actually go back in and put some more pink on, even though I've just covered up all the pink. The thing with skin is that you've got to get lots and lots of layers on there for it to look good. Um, layers upon layers um, with lots of translucency. So I'm just using my darker pink here, which in this case is Dwarf Flesh from Citadel. And I'm using a very old, pretty knackered brush. And I'm looking at the areas that are particularly built up in looking one particular colour. And I'm going to stipple on carefully some of this just in spots. And then I'm going to use my finger just to tap it down to give a bit more variation to those surfaces. The more I do this, it will eventually start. to look more mottled. I can choose individual bits, but the more mottled the surface is, the more realistic this is going to look. Now, I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but to me, that is starting to look like a much better skin quality. Now for this, I want my wash to be really, really thin. Because I want to bring down the colour, but I don't actually really want to see the white on here. So it's going to be really subtle. And if it's not subtle anywhere, 
I will keep going until it is subtle. Here, I really, really don't want that to dry like that. So when you're doing this, you have to really keep checking it for drips or for where the paint has clumped together because you don't want that. That obviously would look terrible. So I'm going to keep brushing it out until that's really, really watered down and spread out that colour. That's now looking much better. I will let that dry completely and that, once that's dry I'll then look and decide whether I need to go over it and add more white and another wash again. I'm now going to go in and I'm going to add in some and start adding in some of the blue veining um, that's just underneath the skin. Now to get the veining to look underneath the skin I'm going to have to um, do that as very very pale wash so that it looks like it's underneath the surface. So I'm just using, well, this is some Humbrol enamel and I'm going to thin it down with some white spirits and I'm going to make sure I thin it way down. I really want hardly any colour on this at all because otherwise it'll be far too dark. I'm thinking about where the veins are and I'm just getting some colour in here. And I really want this to be very light because it's too dark at all it'll look really strange. And if it's too dark I can go back in with just some plain white spirits and thin that out a bit more. going to call this done for now. So it's got some veining on there and it's quite a lot of subsurface blue. So you can see here the veinings in but I'd say round these areas here still need some different colours in here and across the knuckles and particularly the ends of the fingertip they're looking rather too white for my liking. So we're going to get some more pink tones in here. For that I'm using this um, acrylic uh, dusty rose colour um, and again I'm going to use it really really thinned down and I'm going to go into the knuckle area which I want to be more colour in here and I'm just going to make sure that that spreads out It's not too concentrated, particularly the edges. We want the edges to be nice and thin. Once the edges are thin, then you can go back in, put some more colour over the top of that. dab some of this off with a cloth. Oh, 
on this side, the joints here are going to be more blue and it's going to be the pad sections in between the joints that are going to get more red. And I think that's looking much better now. More alive. I think it's time to maybe add a bit of lilac in now. For this, I am just using, again, acrylic lilac. And for the lilac, I'm going to put it in between the knuckles in these areas here. want it to be subtle. So it's going in very lightly. On the other side of my hands, I'm going to add some more lilac across the back of the knuckle and bends. contrast that a bit more with the pink that I put on the higher pad areas. Spread that out and just so there's a tiny bit more colour variation, I'm going to put a bit more down here on the forearm where there's lots of blood vessels. At this point I've gone in and painted the nails. You can see I've used rose and I've used white and I've used lilac in here. I've gone particularly lighter at the bottom here and lighter across at the top and I've also put some very light streaks in halfway across the nail you can just see around here. 
I then went back in with a kind of mushroom type colour in across the tops of the nails here. Don't use white. There's one tip I can give you. Do not use white when you're painting anything natural. You will hardly ever, ever find real white in the natural world. Now that these nails are done, I'm now going to go in and give them a little bit of a coat of varnish um, to get them to look right. I'm going to use a satin varnish. Not, I don't want a high gloss on these because the nails don't tend to be glossy. But I'm going to put a satin varnish on these nails. This is what I'm using. It's just furniture varnish. It's a clear satin um, from DIY store. And uh, that'll do it. And that's the satin varnish applied to the nails, giving them a little bit of a sheen. I will have to let that dry. That sheen will go down slightly as it dries. But you can see they're starting to look much more realistic and that hand's looking way better. With the varnish dry on the nails, this hand is now pretty much finished. The last thing to do is to get rid of the overstuffing where this palm is huge and it looks like it's swollen and bloated and it just doesn't really look good at all. So what I've done is I've just used a Stanley knife and I've made an incision along this part because really I can get rid of this bit because I don't like it. Um, so I'm not bothered about the incision and if I wanted to keep it I've got the incision which I can re-glue. You can see inside it is full of cotton batting. Now we don't want all of that because it's overstuffed so I'm just going to use a pair of forceps and use these to remove the excess batten. That curvature inwards is much more realistic. That's what we want in there, like that. So it's not overstuffed. It looks much more real. Now, obviously, the arm is completely hollow, which I don't want. So I can put some of this back in. Just not going to put it in as far as the hand, Pam. If I want to, I can glue this back shut here and then paint over it so that I've got a severed arm and paint this bit up nicely. But I don't want to do that at the moment. What I'm going to use this for later is to cut this whole stump part off just so I've got a fake realistic hand. I can then use that in my um, independent movie and I can take the stuffing back out of it and I can use it as a kind of skin glove and then I can have different things inside it. So I could be, for instance, replicating the scene from Terminator 2 where the T-800 cuts his arm open and takes off the skin to reveal the robotic hand underneath. So I could use it for that kind of thing. Or again in Terminator or some other robotic movie, you could have it where you have the arm sliced open and you could have some kind of robotics inside that. Or we could just have a skin peeling seam or anything we want with just an insert hand and we don't need this part at all. If we've got an insert hand which we can use, we can then do whatever we want with that hand. But with the stuffing removed and that back to a much more realistic shape, then I think that's us pretty much done. Working on a budget obviously has its pros and cons. On the pro side, this only cost me £4. I didn't have to pay for any of the moulding or casting supplies and it came ready made. I didn't have to put any of that work in other than painting it. On the downside though, there's no quality control that you would have with moulding and casting your own product. This is mass produced in a factory in China and because of that it really shows when it comes to the quality. There is a huge, huge moulded in paint drip which goes all the way down here and along here to here. Now I've tried to cover that up with paint by turning it into a vein with some blue and this paint drip here I've painted to look like a kind of um, wart 
or skin defect. But there's some other defects which you really can't hide. And in some lights, that is like that light there, that is really, really obvious. Whereas in other lights, you can't really see, or other angles, you really can't see it at all. Some defects though, like the bottom of the arm here, there's lots of defects in the latex casting here, all these little holes and bubbles. And that just looks horrible and you'd have to be really careful not to film that. There's also some defects in the latex casting on the underside here and on the backs of the fingers here. This chunk here of missing latex that's been patched in looks hideous. It's like a big skin graft on there. And between the fingers, you can see this really, it's poor quality casting. So you've got to hide those defects and make sure that they don't appear on screen. So there we have it on a budget. Paint wise, I think that's come up pretty well, but obviously there's those flaws that you, in the molding and the casting that you have to put up with and try to hide. Depends what you want for your film, but hopefully um, that will be of some use.